So I had a urologist call me before I did this interview. And he said, and I don't care if this is a conflict or not, you can defer it. I don't think that you should. He said, well, you know, as Klotz told you about the Tulsa data and Tulsa, I said, well, you know, I dabble in a lot of things. I spent a lot of time in prostate. I really haven't looked at Tulsa. And I took a look at it. There's a video, you give a talk on it from last year on YouTube. And can you explain to the audience why you talk about Tulsa, what Tulsa means on a grander scale, or just any commentary? Because I, sure. I bet you very few people know what Tulsa means except a city in Oklahoma. Uh, it's interesting that the the uh, I think a lot of the company is actually based in Tulsa, although that's not why they called it that. Right. So this is another another way to deliver energy to the prostate to destroy the tissue, and it was just approved recently by the FDA for uh, tissue ablation. So it's not actually approved for prostate cancer, but actually the FDA hasn't approved any new device for treatment of prostate cancer in something like 40 years, including the robot. Uh, it's too hard to demonstrate effectiveness against cancer with that disease. So, so it's, 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 a, it's the same concept as HIFU, high intensity focused ultrasound, but it's done in the MR core. <laughs> and the MR nowadays gives the capability for what is called real time thermal mapping. So you get a map of temperature uh, in, the, in the prostate. Now, under normal circumstance, that is useless because everyone's temperature is, you know, um, 98.5, 37 degrees centigrade throughout your body. But if you are using an energy-based technique to heat tissue, then it becomes very powerful because it tells you exactly what the temperature is in every little region of the, in every pixel. Hmm. So, and it's a, it's, it's a closed loop system. And I am, this came out of my institution. I've been involved with this technology for something like 12 years. We did, uh, we did about 40 dogs along the way. We did the first in human and now we've just completed and uh, just accepted for publication the pivotal trial that led to registration, about 115 patients. So it works. It's, done tr it's a transurethral transducer. It basically generates microwave energy that's controlled by the temperature mapping. So you see the tissue heats up on the can MRI. You explain, can you explain transurethral first and why this is interesting? It goes yeah. in the, it's, a, it's like, a, it's like a, a urethral sound. Uh, that's about um, seven millimeters in diameter. So it, it, the urethra accommodates this quite easily. It's done under anesthesia. Uh, so it, it's just like putting a cystoscope, if uh, some, of your, some of the people in the audience know what that is. Yeah. Same idea, but it's got these 10 ultrasound transducers that are five millimeters long each, each one individually controlled. So it's an amazing technology. And the, the, the system, the temperature map controls how much energy is delivered. So that's the advantage. It's very automated. The disadvantage is it's quite complex. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, 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 uh, at, so far, it still takes quite a while to do it, although the actual heating time is quite short. Uh, so it's, it's something new. Um, it's, it's now being kind of pr uh, promoted around the world. I think it still needs to be validated, but the preliminary results look really promising. So when can a person get it if, if, it, if it's working? I mean, when does it become an option here? In uh, so this is, not for, this is not for grade group one, in my opinion. This no. is for grade group, mainly grade group two and three. So particularly partial gland ablation, the sweet spot is the is the guy's got a solitary lesion on MRI that's a grade group two or three. Yeah. And the rest of the prostate doesn't have anything or it has a little bit of grade group one, which you don't worry about. And yeah. so you just zap like half of the prostate. So for that, it is, it is gorgeous. And the appeal of that is really minimal or no long-term side effects. And when, where and when can I get it? So um, there's a few guys in the States who are now doing it. We are planning to start doing it probably sometime in the next few months. So it's, it's, it is now available. And I think probably if you go online and search for it, Tulsa, you, you'll find the guys who are doing it. D-U-L-S-A, right? 
T-U-L-S-A, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the only advertisements I've seen for Tulsa are like, come to Tulsa, Oklahoma or something. I haven't seen, yeah, I haven't seen any <laughs> ads, but I think that at a later time, I don't know, you can give me a timeline. This is interesting. So I looked it up. I think yeah. we should do an interview for 30 minutes that primarily revolves around the pros and cons of it and how it compares to other, do you, yeah. call, you call this a focal therapy, right? So Well, it can be used for either. Like the, the, the trial we just completed and published was whole gland. But, what, but why, I guess what I'm missing is we have all these therapies, these focal ablative therapies that think they're the greatest thing since sliced yeah. uh, bread or sliced bagels, you know, all that stuff. It is for the um, right patient. But, sliced yeah. tomatoes, if you're into lycopene. Why, why, why the pursuit here? What, what was missing out there that made you want to pursue this angle? Precision. Mm. It's all about precision. So the, with, with Haifu, for example, which I also do, I've been doing it for more than a decade. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good technology, but you don't actually know what the tissue effects are. Mm. Like you map out an area where the cancer is and you treat that, but you really have no good way of knowing did, did the t tissue all get treated to the kind of lethal le level and so on. With this, you can see it. So you know if you've got a, a cold spot, you can see it. You don't have, there's no guesswork involved. So I think you know, the, the technology that's going to win is the one that offers the greatest precision. It's also got to be you know, uh, practical, it can't be too expensive, it can't be too time consuming. And, you know, we, we're gonna, it's going to take us 20 years to figure out which one is the best. You used a word, my last question on it, I was always looking for catches, you know, I'm like, uh, where, where's the catch? What's going on here? This looks interesting. Yeah. The urologists are fascinated. And then I listened to your lecture. And this is why you can tell I have no life. I listened to the entire lecture. You know how we just normally just scan things. Yeah. I thought I'm going to listen to the entire Klotz lecture on Tulsa. I, I'm okay. sorry for you. Uh, no, I was good. This is good. I mean, we all, bi-directional learning. You kept yeah. coming back to the word calcifications. Oh. Can you tell me what having a calcification in your prostate even means? Because people think about it when it comes to the arteries, not the prostate. And then why did you keep bringing that up? Well, so, so no, you get calcifications, basically small stones. So the prostate has ducts. It's full of ducts and, and you can form stones in these ducts and they can grow. And the problem is the, the calcification uh, displaces and reflects the ultrasound energy. So the tissue beyond the calcification is not going to receive any, any ultrasound energy and therefore won't get heated. So mm -hmm. in, in the study, we found that actually the presence of calcification larger than one centimeter was one of the strongest parameters picked in, uh, predicting for failure of the treatment, persistence of, of cancer. So, but most patients have small calcifications, uh, which don't seem to matter that much. It's the larger ones that are the problem. So that's going to cut out maybe five or 10% of patients from having this. That's really interesting. So, okay. I see so you saw, I wore my Toronto shirt. You promised me another interview on Tulsa and something else. Happy to do that. Like, when do you want to do that Tulsa interview? The next few months? When's there Anytime. more time? Anytime. Anytime. Oh, yeah. You just made a mistake by making that. <laughs> <to me. laughs>